General David Sarnoff, driving force of the RCA Corporation and the National Broadcasting Company, a pioneer in the development of radio and television broadcasting, a legend, a visionary. Working as a tycoon in business and a visionary in technology, David Sarnoff was the man who made broadcasting what it is today. He rose to leadership as wireless technology evolved, and he led it through a narrow path to appeal to the masses. Through his remarkable business management and projection, he caused the concept of mass media to grow from an idea to an industry that continues to play a prominent role in life today. Coming to New York as a Jewish-Russian immigrant, David Sarnoff began as only a small newsboy with great potential. He worked his way through the eighth grade and found himself getting a full-time job at Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company. At Marconi's, Sarnoff gradually worked his way up from office boy to telegraph repairman to junior wireless telegraph operator. In this position, he was present for a major event in history, the sinking of the Titanic. It is said that Sarnoff received the news by telegraph from the SS Olympic and immediately notified the press. After this, he sat at his post for three days and nights receiving updates. The dedication gave himself more respect in the eyes of his superiors, especially the owner, Guillermo Marconi. This relationship gave him a great example of how to be a leader who connects with their employees, which would be useful in his future in the business of wireless communication. In 1919, Marconi's Wireless Telegraph Company was bought out by General Electric to form the Radio Corporation of America, or RCA. At 28 years old, Sarnoff took the job of commercial manager and began promoting new ideas for the use of wireless technology. That he saw that it would be a, um, rather than being point-to-point -point communication, that it would be point-to-many. And so being able to uh, foresee that this was a mass medium and not just what Marconi thought it was, radio telegraphy. At this point in time, the average home did not own a radio, but small stations were slowly popping up all over America. Through building relationships with executives, Sarnoff was promoted to general manager of RCA in 1921. This gave him the opportunity to compete with the local stations by airing an RCA broadcast. The first RCA broadcast was the heavyweight championship fight between Jack Dempsey and Georges Carpentier. Receivers were set up all over the nation to listen to the highly anticipated fight. With over 300,000 listeners, the success of the broadcast was known across the nation, and it gave Sarnoff permission to pursue the broadcasting industry at RCA. By 1923, there were over 600 local independent radio stations across the nation. These stations still looked at radio in a local way, but Sarnoff was looking towards a larger goal of a nationwide broadcasting station. So in 1926, Sarnoff took charge of this RCA project and launched the National Broadcasting Company with the primary goal of selling RCA radios. Soon after the launch of this network, companies began wanting to sell their products in NBC. This gave the already successful RCA another boost in income from Sarnoff's venture, resulting in one of the most profitable business models in history. In 1929, Sarnoff was approached by a Westinghouse employee, Vladimir T. Zworkin, regarding an early idea of television. Dr. Zworkin, every now and then uh, I like to put the calendar back and uh, remember another important occasion when you came to my office. You were a good salesman, and I was a good dreamer. We talked about broadcasting moving images by electronics. And I remember that I asked you what it would cost to develop an all-electronic television system. Do you recall your estimate? Of course I remember. I asked something like $100,000. Your estimate missed by quite a bit. It cost RCA more than $50 million to create, uh, develop, and introduce America's first all-electronic television system. The next year, Sarnoff was promoted to president. One of his first actions as president was breaking away from General Electric and making RCA an independent company, moving its location to Rockefeller Center. This gave RCA the freedom it needed to succeed with television. I think David Sarnoff is, is a very important and in some ways typical 
American 20th century figure because he's the he's sort of the, the classic entrepreneur who also understands and knows how to exploit and develop technology. And I think people like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs are, are somewhat uh, in the same line as uh, following the footsteps of David Sarnoff because he was a guy who really, uh, he, he understood business, but he also had the respect of his engineers. And he would, you know, when he wanted his engineers at RCA to, to develop uh, te television technology, he was a guy who could get in there and you know, roll up his sleeves and look at the, the vacuum tubes that they were using and so on and really understood what was going on. So he really sort of you know, joined these two worlds of technology and capitalism. After years of development, Sarnoff introduced television at the 1939 World's Fair in New York. And now we add radio sight to sound. Television didn't take off as well as Sarnoff expected, and World War II was emerging into America. So in 1941, RCA stopped the production of televisions and put all of their focus towards the war effort. Sarnoff was called to active duty with the Army Signal Corps in 1942 and again in 1944 to establish news coverage of D-Day and the liberation of Paris. His work in World War II gave him the rank of Brigadier General on December 7, 1944. This title was so important to him that he had people refer to him as the General for the rest of his life. Television sales spiked after World War II, but by 1950, new television technology was already on the market, color television. RCA was not the first to the finish line for color. CBS released it in 1950, but theirs was not compatible with the current black and white televisions. New broadcasts would need to be made for only the color sets. But RCA followed close behind CBS and released the compatible color television in 1953 in One Over America. Sarnoff continued looking ahead and pushing the limits of technology for the remainder of his time at RCA. He retired as the chairman in 1970 and passed away the next year on December 12, 1971, at 80 years old. His overseeing of the many trials and accomplishments of RCA display a great course of leadership that will resound far into the future of broadcasting and communication technology. Today, you can see David Sarnoff's legacy by simply looking around. Technology that evolved from Sarnoff's actions fills the world around us. Uh, Sarnoff was, was quite uh, accurate in his ideas of, of the popularity of broadcast radio. And once you start with radio, you go from AM radio to FM radio, then you add a picture to FM radio and you have television. And a lot of the industries then you know copied each other. Television makes inroads into the market and so then movies come out with a lot of innovations in order to compete with television. And then, and then TVs come out with you know bigger and bigger screens and it goes back and forth, back and forth between radio, TV, movies, books, you know, all the different media forms for, for getting your, your share of attention and your share of that almighty uh, dollar. Which is Although RCA did not sustain their role as the leader in technology after Sarnoff's death, other companies took the base of RCA products to improve and create new technology. Any smartphone, tablet, or laptop could be used to listen to the radio, watch television, or receive news instantly through the air. At the tap of a finger, we can be entertained by a myriad of networks that compete with the original nationwide station, NBC. The specific products of RCA may not last for much longer, but Sarnoff's concepts like point-to-mass communication have been portrayed in new ways like through the internet. The internet gives the average person access to broadcast their own thoughts and ideas through social media. David Sarnoff's journey to the top is just as inspiring as his course of leadership. He truly showed what could be done with hard work and determination. And once he reached the point where he had the power to make big decisions, he knew exactly what to do. He made the most of his time for his business to produce the best technology they could. But the many products and concepts developed by RCA are only a small part of the great legacy left by David Sarnoff. His leadership, business management, and promotional tactics are responsible for the creation of the great business of broadcasting. He turned ideas into action, which resulted in a new industry. For his genius in the field of electronics, for his leadership, for his lasting contributions to the broadcast industry, the first person inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame is General David Sarnoff.